السلام عليكم ورحمه الله اهلا بكم من جديد النهارده هنعمل احلى طبق Hi. فول وين دو وي تري وي غانا بي ميكينج ايجيبشن فود فور ا هول داي يلا بينا ستاندينج اوف وذ بريكفاست ويتش از تيبيكلي ميك تو شير وي كيبينج ات سيمبل تري باي ميكينج بيبل باسترما فول مدمس عيش بلدي اند عسل طحينه Alright, first off, I'm going to start with the Egyptian bread, which is a necessity in every Egyptian breakfast. Here I am just mixing warm water with sugar, yeast and olive oil and wholemeal flour until it's nice and smooth. Let it rise, portion it out and roll into flatbread. Cook it off on a high heat until it puffs open and you get that signature split in the middle. Full mudammis is up next, which is actually fava beans or broad beans, one of the most popular breakfasts in Egypt. Starting off with some garlic, olive oil, I then added some diced tomatoes and let that cook down for a bit. I then added my tinned full, which are traditionally dried fava beans that have been soaked in water and cooked for hours. Anyway, let that cook down for a few minutes. Add some salt, some lemon, some cumin, and I also added a little bit of water because it was getting a bit dry. Finish off with some olive oil, and it's time to plate. Asal tahini is a super quick, delicious sweet treat that is basically just tahini mixed with molasses. Done. Bebel basterma just translates to pastrami eggs. Start off by cooking some slices of basterma in some ghee until dark brown. Crack the eggs into the pan and then start stirring. Season with salt and pepper, and that is also done. And our breakfast is ready. All right, this is it. Egyptian breakfast. Let's try. So with the full, you can either dip the bread in or you can open it up like that and make a full sandwich, pretty much. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Delicious. You can use the same bread and dip it in your asal and tahina. Mm. Perfect dessert. Let's go finish off this breakfast and then we're on to lunch. Let's go. All right, moving on to lunch, which is typically eaten between two to five. I'll be making mulukhiya, bram, roz, ma'amar. Let's go. First things first, we're gonna make a delicious stock to use for both our dishes. Start by lightly sauteing some onions, cardamom, bay leaves and a few coriander seeds. Then we'll fill it up with water, add the chicken and let it slowly simmer in the background. In the meantime, we're gonna prepare our birem by brushing a layer of ghee all around the bottom of this clay pot. Wash and rinse the rice, add it to the pot, add some hot salted milk and the broth from earlier. Top all this off with some cream and then in the oven it goes. Once the stock is ready, we're gonna strain it and bring it to the boil. And only when it's boiling, we're gonna add our frozen molokhaya. That's the rule. Molokhaya is this green leaf similar to spinach, but has a slightly different texture. Moving on, we're gonna mix the soup until all the molokhaya is defrosted and the soup has thickened up. To finish all this up, we're gonna fry some diced garlic in some ghee until golden. And then we're gonna pour it on top of our soup. This is called tashcha, a basic version of it at least. Anyway, time to plate, pour it in a bowl, top it off with some shredded chicken and serve it with our hot, crusty, delicious, steamy rice. And that's it for lunch. So should we eat the rice and the soup together? Yeah, so with the molokhaya, people would have it with either the aish baladi that we made earlier or they would have it with rice. So you can either dip the rice in the molokhaya or you can pour the molokhaya on top of the rice, which is a lot of, what a lot of people do. Mm. Next up, I'm making omali for dessert. First off, I started by cutting the phyllo pastry into small pieces. I added some ghee and toasted it in the oven until crispy. Next, I toasted some almonds and crushed them into small pieces. I also toasted off some coconut until golden and added that in with some raisins. People use different nuts and raisins for this recipe, but today I use these. I also added the pastry into the tray and some warm milk with some sugar. 
added some cream on top to get that nice crispy topping. Here we have the omali. Done? Omali. Let's, let's try. Let's try. I'm looking forward to this. Egyptian bread and butter pudding. That's what they say. <laughs> mm. What do you think? Tastes like home. <laughs> Thanks, mum. Last but not least, we're going to be making fritur mesheltet for dinner. This can be eaten sweet or savoury, but today we're going to be making it with sojuk and cheese. It's called to go. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah volunteered to make the fritur. Are you sure you want to do this? Take the responsibility of making fritur mesheltet? Yes, I can do it. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. <laughs> So first off I started by making the dough which was just flour, sugar, salt and water and mix until smooth. And if there wasn't enough ghee already today, I drenched the dough in it. After two hours of resting, I attempted to stretch the dough like the, the locals do it. Whoa! <laughs> Don't show me you seen only if it turns out good. Please. <laughs> After that failed attempt, I decided to go with a different approach by stretching the dough onto the bench until it was paper thin. I folded the edges over and put my filling in the middle and closed it all up. I set this to the side and then repeated the process and added my filled dough in the middle. I then pushed it into the baking tray and baked it until it was nice and golden. Let's try. That's the layers for the fatir. It's quite close actually. Mm. It's almost spot on. What is it missing? I don't know. It was quite good. Mm, yum. Reminds me late night with the boys. Not bad. It's currently 10 pm and we have officially finished all the dishes from today. Been a long day, but it was worth it. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert. Let us know what country you want us to eat from. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what country cuisine you want us to cook next time and hope you enjoyed. Assalamu alaikum. Bye. <laughs>